Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. You're watching Lifting the Fog, a program designed to get rid of the misconceptions, misunderstandings, and the misrepresentations about Islam and what it teaches. I'm your host, Yusuf Estes, and tonight I'd really like to address a, a situation that a, a lot of people attack Islam. They say harsh things against Islam. They talk harsh against the Muslims. And they would have you believe that Islam is something about abuse, that Islam is something to do with violence, that Islam is having something to do with oppression. Is that true? Well, and we hope in your programming tonight you're going to see something to dispel that notion and to show you the real truth about what Islam is about. Particularly tonight I want to talk about what is the role of women in Islam. Yeah, there's a lot of books, by the way, about this subject, written by Muslim women and Muslim men and non-Muslim women and non-Muslim men. And they're basically trying to get across the idea either that Islam is bad to these women or it's good to these women. What I'd like to do now is have you to think of what I'm going to say and then you decide for yourself. It's up to you. It's your choice. But let's look. Somebody comes to me. It happens a lot. How can you be in a religion of violence? How can you be in a religion where you're ordered to beat your wives? How can you be in a religion where a man has four wives and a woman only has one husband? How can you be in a religion where a woman is lower than a man? And etc., etc. How do I respond to this? And one of the worst ones of all is the one that says, How can you be in a religion where a 53-year-old man has sex with a 6-year-old girl? Well, the first time I heard that, I was, <laughs> I was drinking some coffee. I almost spit it out. I was so upset that somebody would say something like this. But I know where they get it from. And I understand how they take these things out of context and even lie. So that's when I decided, you know what we need to do? We need to have a program where we get rid of these misconceptions. We need to have some kind of a way to reach the people. And then along comes Who to TV. And I said, now there's a chance for us to do this. I don't care what it costs or what it takes. I want to be a part of this to get this message across in the plain and simple English language. That Islam is against every single thing that they said. Islam was brought, bringing the solution to these kind of problems 1,400 years ago. Let me give you some examples on that. Okay. There's a clear verse in the Quran ordering people not to do something to their children. Did you know that? Clearly states, do not kill your children. Now, along with that, it was saying, worship only one God and keep your religion pure for Him. And it's similar to the beginning of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt have no other gods beside me, etc. But in the Bible, it talks about honor for your parents. Well, we have that in the Quran too. But here in the Quran, it says, don't kill your children fearing that they're going to be competing with you for your food or something like this. Now, that's amazing. And also, chastising the people for an act of killing their daughters. Now, what is that all about? Ordering them not to do that. So, what we need to do now is go back and look a little bit closer to what was going on prior to the advent of Islam. In fact, the status of the woman in those days amongst the ignorant Arabs in the Arabian Peninsula was really low. So low that it was lower than the status of an animal because a man would treat his goats or his sheep or his horses or his camels a whole lot better than he would treat his women. Men had no limits on how many wives they could have. And there was no age limit on when you could marry them. But the worst of all was that men considered themselves so much better than women that if a girl was born to their family, it was considered such a shame and aib on them that they would go to the desert and bury that little baby girl alive. They would kill her. And so here is this lamb coming and forbidding that. Now stop and think. That kind of activity going on, here's a verse that says don't do that. Don't kill these innocent baby girls. But not only that, it's telling you how to deal with the women and raising their status up very high. 
instead of the women being subservient to men, that they have to uh, just be treated like slaves or, or even less. Then Islam come with this verse. I want you to listen closely because when you read it, you'll see something amazing here. But go to the Arabic. This is in chapter 4 called An-Nisa. And by the way, that means the women. It's a chapter dedicated to women. And look what it says in verse number 34. It tells you here the status of men and women both in Islam. It says the Rajul. Rajul is a male. That the Rajulan is responsible for the Nisa, the women. To the extent that he has to provide for them, for their daily needs, and also their security. So he is their provider and their protector. This is what it says. So much so that Allah goes on to say, because he, Allah, has made one to excel the other in this capacity. That he's made it so that the men are able to protect the women. They're able to provide for the women out of their means. The men are to provide for women, not the other way around. Okay. What society do we have today that calls for women to be elevated to the level of a princess or a queen in their own home? Or do we have societies that are saying that women are equal to men and they have to do what men do? Islam elevated the status of the woman. Not the other way around. Women do not have to go out into public eye. They do not have to remove their clothing so that men will be attracted to them to hire them. Women do not have to disgrace themselves, lower themselves, to go out and compete against men for their livelihood because a woman's livelihood is guaranteed in Islam. Because when Allah said it, He said, All males are responsible for who? All females. This means... This means the women, when they're born, little girls, are protected immediately. There is no infanticide in this. There, you cannot kill these little girls anymore. Plus, you have to provide for them security and provide for them their daily bread, if you will. Now, in addition to that, this is the father. Suppose he dies, then her brother is responsible. Suppose she gets married, then her husband is responsible. Suppose her husband dies. Then her son, or back to her brother, or her uncle, and if she has no male relatives at all, then the Muslim men in the society are responsible to provide those things for this woman. Her protection, and her education, and her food, sustenance, clothing, all of these things are to be provided for by the men. All males are responsible for all females because one has been elevated in what? Not that he's having a higher position over her. No. But he has the ability to go out and do these things. Now, keep reading the verse because guess what it says next? Because of this, now the woman's position is what? The woman's position is that she is obedient now, some try to translate this to mean that she has to 